everyone, and welcome to Hikurashi When They Cry. Ho. Oh. This is a visual novel that I've been wanting to play for a while. I've seen the anime, but only a few episodes of it. And it's getting a remake soon, so... I want to kind of like... Watch the anime and play the visual novel at the same time before then. So, yeah. In any case, the first chapter, Onikakushi, is actually available for free on Steam right now. And it will be until a vaccine for COVID-19 has been found. So, if you want to get it for yourself, make sure to click the link in the description. And if this, and if the Let's Play for the first chapter gets enough of a positive reception, I might consider buying all of the other cha chapters and doing a Let's Play on those as well. I can't really make any promises, though, because I might have already broken some, but I'll strongly consider it. That's as much as I can say. So, no more talking. Let's start. Welcome to the world of Higurashi When They Cry. The only Kakashi arc will be the opening inviting you into this world. Don't play tough. Please, just enjoy life in Hinamizawa to the fullest. The difficulty is extremely high, but I hope you will enjoy the reward. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was kind of creepy. Please do not lament. I will forgive you even if the world will not forg forgive you. Please do not lament. I will forgive you even if you will not forgive the world. So please, tell me, what will it take for you to forgive me? Federica Bre Castle. Oh. <laughs> this is a work of fiction. Any resemblance to actual persons or organizations are completely coincidental. <laughs> 80, 1983, the summer of the 50th year of the Showa era. <laughs> this is going so fast! The text is, anyway. If I was going to be ripped apart anyways, having my body ripped apart would have been far better. Oh. I trusted her. No. I still trust her. Even in this very moment, I trust her. But I'm starting to realize. I only wanted to trust her because I refused to accept the truth. It was as if I was trying to convince myself in such a silly, sobbing voice. And those tears, those tears making a mess of my face. The mechanical, repetitious sound finally stilled, and everything fell silent. Only the cry of the cicadas remained, annoyingly loud. And yet, I felt as if I could still hear her voice. But that's not possible. She is no longer speaking. Oh. The only one crying is me. She never cried. Even when she repeated those words over and over, she never expressed any emotion, because there were none to show. If she had no tears, tears to shed for me, then I shouldn't need to shed any for her. And why? This pain. My eyes getting moist. Why was this happening? I still wanted to believe I hadn't been split apart. That's enough, right? Inside me, an inner voice whispered gently. My spirit had suffered enough. And countless times, I'd wave, wavered over whether I should just throw the battered thing away. Except, I've stubbornly refused to do that, haven't I? I'd feel better if I just threw it away. Even knowing that, I chose to believe, didn't I? Only I can understand that painful struggle, and appreciate it. Hey, me? I've tried more than enough. I'll acknowledge that much. So, 
Isn't it all right to just take the easy way out? Besides, I'm not throwing it away. I'm leaving it behind, with her, like flowers by a grave. Oh, now then, calm your nerves. Even though you can't feel your right arm, just lift it up, and with every swing, forget a little more. That kindness made me happy. That adorable smile brought me joy. I liked petting your head. I loved how demure you were. Because this will be the last time. Because when I swing this down, I'll forget. This is my first and last bouquet for you. Perhaps I really did love you. He grass you when they cry. Okay then. Oh, I got an achievement. Somebody hasn't been apologizing for a while now. I wonder what she's apologizing for. It felt wrong to eavesdrop, so I tried to ignore it. It had been a while since I'd last been, went to the city. I only returned to attend the funeral of a relative. Even though I'd lived there until last month, I found the bustle of the city to be overwhelming. The skyscrapers and the multi-lane roads, the melodious cacophony of the crosswalk, even the campaign speeches blaring in front of the station felt nostalgic. The place where I live now isn't nearly as lively. There's only the chirping of the locusts and the babbling of brooks, and the cry of the higurashi, the evening cicadas. Rather than making me feel lonely, that quietness had begun to instill a sense of serenity. There's nothing where I'm living now. I don't just mean there aren't any burger joints. There aren't even vending machines. Each. No music stores, no restaurants, and no arcades. No arcades! Even an ice cream parlor would be unlikely. No ice cream parlor! The nearest town had some stuff like that, but it's an hour away by bike. But come to think of it, it wasn't really a big deal. There were music stores and arcades and ice cream parlors, but it wasn't like I ever hung out at any of them. I had lived in the city for, for 10 years and never once been to an ice cream parlor. I should have gone at least once. It's only now that I'm starting to regret that a little. Somebody is still apologizing. Who is she apologizing to? She's apologized so much, so just forgive her already. There's no reason anyone should ever need to apologize so much. I started to feel a bit annoyed at whoever was refusing to forgive her. No matter how bad the mistake, there's nothing that can't be forgiven. There's no such thing as an irreparable mistake. You just need to be more careful next time. She's still apologizing, even now. Then, has she really done something that can't be fixed? I have no idea what she's done, but if it can't be fixed, then that's all the more reason to forgive her. No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will change. But even so, she keeps apologizing in such a heartbreaking voice. Hey, you, the one she's apologizing to. Why don't you just go ahead and forgive her? She's apologizing in such a pathetic voice. Keiji, we're almost there. Wake up. I was finally roused from my nap by my father's prodding. Oh, I probably should have spoken in a deeper voice then. Keiji, we're almost there. Wake up. It seemed the train had reached its final stop. We spent hours hours riding everything from the bullet train to the local routes. It was hard to believe that the landscape beyond the window in the city I was in half a day ago were in the same country. No, that they were even in the, from the same era. From there, we take a car deeper into the mountains.
past where the dense forest encroaching on the mountain road suddenly opened up. There, where I live now, Hinamizawa. The town where we live. Even though we were approaching summer, the morning air still had a frigid bite. Although, in exchange, you could fill your lungs up with crisp, clean, clean air. Flipping open the window, I was greeted with a brilliant expanse. Nothing but trees. The neighboring house was far away on the other side. So, I was probably the only one enjoying that view and that air. I filled my lungs with another deep breath. Since I started living in Hinamizawa, I learned that even air has had its own taste. I quickly finished getting ready for school and headed downstairs for breakfast. My mother was the only one there. My father was nowhere to be seen. He was probably up and up working until the early morning. Dad had a rather unconventional job as a painter. It's such a laid-back profession. Get up when you want, sleep when you want, and work when you want. I was so jealous of that easygoing lifestyle. I even wrote for school that I wanted to be a painter when I grew up. Dad was ecstatic about that. It was just because it looked easy. I never tell him that, though. I'm just going to say now, painting isn't really that easy. I mean, you have to be... No, never mind. My mom laid out breakfast on the table. Seaweed, pickled vegetables, raw egg, and grilled salmon. My mom was such a good cook, it was scary. A perfect, immaculate, ideal breakfast. Unlike my dad, who didn't even know the meaning of the word schedule, my mom never squandered any time or effort. She hummed a little tune as she brought over the miso soup. It seemed like she was in a good mood today. I'm so happy you've been waking up early since we moved here for Keiichi. If I don't wake up early, I won't have time to eat breakfast. I thought I was being cute, responding with a wisecrack after being praised for being good. Full bowl of rice? Full bowl of rice? Or we'll have to be enough. Pile it on. First, I savored the steaming hot rice with the seaweed. After that, I covered it with the egg. Between bites of rice, I enjoyed the crunch of the pickles. Not bad at all. Excellent as usual. Watch me clean my plate. Mom gave me a warm smile. I'm so happy you haven't skipped breakfast ever since we moved here, Keiichi. I was not a morning person when we lived in the city. I slept right until the last minute before school and rarely ate breakfast. That's not something you should do. Boycotting the breakfast mom made me each morning, that was probably the only way I could protest being forced to attend in cram school. I guess that was what you would call my rebellious phase. I went so much as look at the breakfast she woke up early every day to make. If I could go back in time, I'd slap myself! My of the time, Mom rushed me along with a gr wide grin. Isn't it about time you, you met up, you meet up, isn't it about time to meet up with Renachan? Renachan? Hurry, hurry! Mom really seemed to enjoy the, the fact that her son is going to school with a girl. Rena is one of my classmates. She really loves looking after people, coming to meet me every day without fail. The way I looked at it, a guy my age walking to, to school with a girl was just lame. I don't think that's lame. But, well, keeping a classmate waiting for me every day wouldn't be very considerate. Seriously though, how long does Reno wait there for me every morning? Taking one last gulp of miso soup, I race for the door. Please thank Renachan for the pickles! Come to think of it, those pickles weren't store-bought, were they? If I'd known that, I would have savored them a bit more. Morning! Oh! Hi, Rena! Keiichi-kun! Good morning! Her cheerful greeting was as fresh as the morning itself. You're always so, 
You're, al you're always so early. You should try sleeping in sometime. If I sleep in, I'll keep you waiting. She's so conscientious and such a good person. If that ever happens, I'll just leave you behind. Keijika, you're so cold. I wait for you all the time. I'll leave you in the dust. Without looking back. Keiji, why are you so mean? Why are you so mean? Why? I guess Rena and I are of equal minds. Rena had a slightly troubled look on her face. Toying with her was rather fun because of how quickly her mood changed. I'm kidding. I'd wait for you. With those words, Rena seemed to relax. Her face flushed bright red. Uh -huh. Thank you. I wait. I wait forever until you came, Rena. No matter how long. Uh, 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 for forever? Rena turned bright red, steam rising from her head as her, her brain short circuited. She's especially she's especially weak to this sort of talk. It's quite weird to find someone this fun to tease. Have you ever read a romance novel, Rena? Uh, uh, I haven't. I've never read any before. I could give you a few recommendations. In that response, I gathered she was interested in them, but was too embarrassed to actually buy one. I couldn't imagine what would happen if she did read one. She'd probably turn red and pass out. Oh yeah, message for mom. She says thanks for the pickles. <laughs> it was nothing. You're welcome. How were they? Not too salty? They weren't that salty. Actually, they had a pretty light flavor to them. It would have been fine to just be honest and say they were, the, they were good, but apparently I couldn't be that forthright. I'd like to ask something before that. Were you the one who pickled them, Rena? Or was it your mom? Huh? Huh? Why do you ask? Were... Were they too salty? Her attitude completely changed as she began to panic frantically. Was it you, Rena? Or was it your mom? Answer the question, girl! Oh, why are you asking who made them? Why? Depending on who made them, my opinion of them might change drastically. Jeez, Keiichi, that's cold! Huh? Uh -huh. She counted it frantically on her fingers, trying to remember the amount of salt she used to pickle them. It wasn't like I was trying to tease her, but I couldn't stop myself. Guys who take pleasure in this kind of thing are probably the worst. Guys like me. Renna ner nervously opened and closed her mouth over and over, trying to muster a, resp muster a response. <laughs> it was me. Aw, oh, Renna. Delicious. Huh? Pretty good, just like the last ones. They went perfectly with the rice. Her face went bright red again. She was completely spacing out. It truly was a lot of fun to tease her. I pray that Rena never gets taken advantage of by a some low life. I pray for the same thing. Keep back at it, Rena. I'll train you until you handle it like the average person. Or so I decided for myself. Let's go. If we keep keep me on waiting, we'll never hear the end of it. Seeing as she just kept spe she just keeps spacing out. Otherwise, I called Rena back to reality so we could make our way to school. The strange, easily flustered girl was is Rena Ryugu. I only known her for about a month, but I've come to realize that it's not just her name that's strange. Wow. True. I like this music. Michan! Good morning! Coming to the next rendezvous point, we saw another person waiting for us. Noticing us, she waved. Oh, hi, Neon! Ah, finally, finally! You two are late! Usually, you're the one who's late. In sharp contrast to the diligent Mirena, this one marched to the beat of her own drum. She's Mion Sonosaki. For what it's worth, she's our senior and head of the class. Morning, Ren- Morning, Rena! It's been a while, Kei-chan! How many years? It hasn't been that long! That's only off two days! <laughs> you don't say. You were so much cuter back then. Mion's gaze stared at my chest, then dropped straight down, focusing on the point between my legs. Hey, 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 hey. 
We don't go there. We don't go there. This isn't an arrow game. Meh, whatever. So she was saying it was my crotch that was cuter back then. Before you ask, just to be clear, I've never actually tried to show it to her. Yeah, and you should probably keep it that way. Unless you're in a certain situation, and it's consensual, I mean, what? I've grown quite spend splendidly. You'd be, you'd be surprised. Not only is he bigger, but he has a little mustache now. Being so, being so engorged with energy every morning is quite a problem, though. I'll introduce you next time, so be sure to greet him properly. Don't say next time. Right now, it's just fine. Um... How about letting the little guy get a breath of fresh morning air? We're outside, you know! I don't think I ever heard so... Talk so dirty you could smell it fouling up the morning air before. Mion sure does act like an old man sometimes. Gotcha. Time for the big reveal. Hope you don't regret it! As my hand reached for my fly, Rena began to ramble in a near panic. Hey, hey, hey! What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you probably shouldn't show Rena. She's too innocent! Red face and flustered, Rena tried to play dumb, but it was obvious she knew exactly what we were talking about. How was it? Seeing the city again? Mion switched gears, dropping the dirty talk and changing the topic to something more fitting than a pleasant morning. I only went for a funeral. I didn't have much time. So, yeah. Did you look for it? That thing I asked for? You're not listening at all. So what's the thing? I just came back from a funeral. I didn't have any time to look around in toy stores. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Toy stores and hobby shops are completely different, you know? It's really difficult to get Western stuff around here, after all. Is this about games again, Michan? Mion nodded at his friend that giggled. Yep! I wanted k to bring me back a Westport catalog, you see. Westport is short for Western Emporia Games. Well, of course. Using that abbreviation did make it sound pretty geeky. You can get- you can just get them to send you one in the mail, can't you? Well, guess I have to now. I'm going to get another game full of hot action! Th this time, I'd like to get a game that's easy to understand. Mia is a boring ca card game enthusiast, and I hear her she's collected quite a lot of different ones. According to Rena, Mia's room has some kind of museum for domestic and foreign games. If there's a game you think I understand, let me play too. <laughs> of course! If k is up for it, I should warn you though, we're pretty tough. Just what I want. I play all sorts of games. I don't intend to lose. Whoa. That won't let you in the group this time, I guess. I guess? Bristling with joy from head to toe, Rena looked back and forth between me and Mion. Mion gave her an affirmative, affirmative wink, and her expression perked up even further. I, th I thought boys preferred playing outside more, so I figured you wouldn't want to. Rena laughed happily. Oh, that was Rena. From having such a friendly conversation, you wouldn't think I had moved here less than a month ago. I understood that they did all make they did all they could to make a, a transfer student like me feel at home. I'll have to try harder to fit in, so they don't won't feel like I have to try and make me feel they have to try and make me feel welcome. I felt as if I acted a, a bit more open than I usually am, it should probably be about right for this place. Hinaizawa is a really small village. Not only was there about was there only one school, yeesh, only one school, but there was only one class, yeesh, one class. That class encompasses all different all different grades and ages. There are about thirty students at, at different levels, and they all study in the same class. I'm told that long ago there used to be a bigger school building, and they had actual separate classes. However, it seems something happened that made it become a single class. 
cannot see that way out of position. What could that something to happen be? I was shocked at first, but humans adapt pretty quickly. I've already gotten quite used to it. The sound of children playing started right from the morning. With such a lively mood, it felt more like a kindergarten than a proper school. Not that it was a bad thing. Not that that was a bad thing. Mayon, who had been talking, walking in front of us up until then, suddenly let me take the lead. Right from the classroom door. So, I was meant to slide the door open and enter the room first. <laughs> Too bad! I wasn't going to fall for that again! Do you think you'd give up the lead here? You meant for this to be a test of my skills. Meon chuckled with a high smirk on her face. Let me guess. It's one of the those pranks where there there is an eraser on top of the door. Er, and once someone opens it, it falls on their head. Leaving chuck hot dust everywhere. Oh, what is it, you guys? Step back, Rena. It's dangerous. She's here! Huh? Then... Satoko-chan is... Oh dear. Her name was Satoko Hojo. She was a disre disrespectful, impudent, bossy kid. The way she talks was annoying, but it would be immature to get worked up over just that. The real problem was this. Quite the obvious trap. Blackboard eraser watching the door. I was right! It's too obvious! Satoko! A high and laugh came from beyond the door. Excellent, Keichan! I guess you means I guess that means you win this round! No, this is Satoko we're talking about. I doubt this is it. After falling for such intricate traps since the day I transferred, I no longer let my guard down. Satoko like a like to combine a variety of traps. Traps that were simply there to bait you into the main one. Traps that relentlessly kept coming at you like a sadistic Rube Goldberg machine. The list goes on. As well as being clever, they almost never misfire. When you least expect it, she strikes! No escape. No time to relax. By the looks of it, this eraser is normal. No rocks or anything in it. I took a pretty heavy hit with, from a blackboard eraser loaded with, with rocks on my first day. Ouch! So then why don't you just open the door and let it drop? That's where it is! That's what so Satoko was after. Making me focus my attention upward. So as I lifted my hand to the door... There were thumbtacks stuck to the sliding door where handle was tape. A frightening trap. A, pot a potent and terrifying trap. Concealed by the using the blackboard eraser. An impressive co combination, Sotoko. But in the end, nothing more than the trivial machinations of a child. I of my victory, I threw the door open and stepped into the room. I felt something strained at my ankle. It was similar to the sensation of a jump rope catching on my leg. Oh dear. By the time I realized she had me, hook, line, and sinker, it was already too late. I began to fall with an almost picturesque ma manner. Kei-chan, what? Watch out! Instinctively reacting to Mion's short warning, I twisted my body in midair before I landed on the floor. Nice! Ow, ow, ow! An ink stone filled to the brim was placed right where I would have landed. I shuddered, imagining the situation I had landed, had I landed square on it. <laughs> you think you got me, didn't you? Well, no, 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 no! You can thank me on for the fact that uh, I didn't land on it. My, my! What do we have here? A fair morning to you, Keiji-san. Aren't we a lively one this morning? Still swallowed in an awkward position, I was greeted by a mocking voice. That was a step up from your usual, from your usual, little traps, Satoko. I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. You're quite unlucky this morning. You little! Ow, 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 ow. It seemed I'd inadvertently sprained my feet back a little when I landed. Ouch! Better than landing on that inkstone! Oh. A small hand gently rubbed my head. Pain, pain, 
go away! The small, dinky hand continued to gently stroke my head. You didn't sprain your back or anything, did you? If you rub it like this, the pain disappears. I thought about asking you about how rubbing my head would help my back, but I didn't. It's not so much about what you actually do, it's thought that counts. Eh, yeah. Thanks, Rika-chan. The pain's going away now. Well, at least she's trying. Yay! Rika-chan, good morning! Good morning to you, Rena. A good morning to you all. Rika-chan greeted each of us with an adorable little bow. It was infectious. Rena, uh, Mion, and I all bowed back. You're such a good... You're such a good kid, Rika-chan. So much better than Satoko! I glared over in her direction. Ta Satoko was whistling weather while rather deliberately trying to avoid eye contact. I am the very model of a good girl. You are the very model of not fooling anyone. A good girl who... A good girl wouldn't set at those nasty traps. Nothing but lies and slander! Except for what poop... I picked up Satoko by the back of her collar. She looks like a beha misbehaved cat when I do this. But a cat wouldn't be saying traps. She's much harder to deal with. I'm sorry! No. Oh. I am S-O-R-R-Y. I'm sorry. Try saying that. If you won't say it. I caught my index finger on my thumb, letting it tremble as I brought it closer to Satoko's forehead. Just so you know, my forehead like really hurts. I it can split plywood right in half. Eek! Stop! Get away from me, you beast! Don't say that in a way people will, mis will misunderstand. A small hand tucked on the back of my shirt. She's been lonely since you were gone for two days. Oh, so her pranks were a way of welcoming me back, huh? Rika-chan really is just so... How can I do anything more after being told that? I gently released my grip on Satoko, who at this point was on the verge of tears. She still had her eyes clamped shut as she braced herself for the forehead flick. Hey, I put you down. I put you down. <laughs> that doesn't bother me. Satoko. Keep on fighting, yeah. Rika gently pat petted the head of her prankster friend. Why was Rika so nice? He would never guess those two were the same age. I think Satoko could learn a thing or, or a million from Rika-chan. Next time, send an even more amazing trap. Oh. Wait a minute! As she observed the scene, Rena's expression grew ecstatic as she began to swoon. Oh, Satoko-chan is crying. So cute. You can't take them home. Oh, but, but they're so cute. You can't, no matter how cute they are. But just for a bit, it's fine. It's fine. Rena kept a cutesy face even as outrageous ideas spewed from her mouth. According to Beyond, Rena is ridiculously weak to cute things and always tries to take them home. Eesh. Object or person? Rena, please don't kidnap people, okay? Stealing is bad, but abducting people is even worse. Give it up. But I can just look. Just looking. That should be fine, right? Right? Yeah, it should be fine if you're just looking. Brenna swooned over Satoko's crying form. If a girl ever goes missing in Hinabizawa, I'd be forced to turn Renna in to the authorities. Brenna, please don't kidnap anyone. Please, I'm begging you. Forgive me, Renna. I'll be sure to bring you care packages when they put you away. The teacher's coming. Quickly, clean everything up. Satoko, that inkstone is yours, right? Just from me on a single statement, the entire mood of the room shifted back to normal. The inkstone was bad, but the 
thumbtack stuck to the, the door handle were an even bigger problem! I pulled the tape off carefully, making sure not to skewer myself. Even though Satoko was the one who signed up, everyone had to pick up after her. By the time the teacher, by the, time the teacher entered the room, the bed lamp from before her had already been neatly tied up. <laughs> we made it in time! Rise! Attention! Malin gave up the morning commands. It's difficult being the teacher for all these different grades in one classroom. She has to teach something different to each one. But naturally, she ends up spending all her time with the younger kids. Brenda and Mion, being in the highest grade in the class, end up do mostly doing self-study. They even end up helping teach the younger kids, so it seems like they can never get down to their own studies. They're actually way behind where my the studies have progressed to. As a result, I'm pretty much taking over for the teacher and helping Rena and Mion with their studies. You're a pretty good teacher, Keiichi-kun! Easy to understand! Brenda took a breather after finishing highlighting an important section. Teaching is making me lose confidence. It makes me aware of how shallow my understanding of the subject is. They say that to teach someone is something, you need to understand it backwards and forwards. So while you're teaching us, you're getting, your, you're getting in your own practice. In contrast, this person over there is quite la laissez faire about things. I am hoping I pronounced that right. I am sorry if I didn't. Please forgive me. For one, isn't she supposed to be in a higher grade than me? Look, Mion, this is for your own good. If you don't take this seriously, there will be trouble later on. With these marks. It's not like I'm aiming to go on to a prestigious school. I'll be fine as long as I pick up what I need to know for the entrance, entrance exams a little at a time. Her staunch defiance was really something else. This was a different type of relax than somebody who already knew what was going to be on the entrance exams. Mechan, Cage Kai is doing his best to teach us. We need to try hard, too. You're such a good and honest kid, Rena. I'll make sure you guys get accepted into a good school. Oh, oh, thanks so much! Especially you, Rena. Private lessons? Just the two of us. <laughs> Pri private uh, lessons? Oh, jeez. A puff of smoke shaped like a halo popped out of Rena's head. Exactly what kind of private lesson is she fantasizing about that's making her turn so red? I have to hear the play by they play about that next time. Eesh. While Mion was flipping through her her vocabulary flashcards, she threw out a casual question. So in the sti in the city, do you have to study this much? If you don't know it, well, at least this much, you can't get into university. So you study just to get into a university? Well, yeah, basically. While knowing that this stuff won't ever come in handy in the future. Out here, you can get into, any, into university as long as your attendance is good enough. R really? Study equals entrance exams. Having that basic law of the universe so easily overturned sent me into a state of shock. Mm. I mean... Right! There aren't really good enough people around here to warrant getting them at, oh, with an exam. If anyone can get into university, then there's no need to be all uptight about this stuff, right? Well, that's true, but you should at least know stuff that's common knowledge. This old geezer thinks that, instead of wasting time in studying pointlessly, you should be spending your precious teen years doing more meaningful things. It was too far kind of a statement to simply laugh off. But since it was me on, it probably didn't actually have that deep of a meaning. In place of a chime, the sound of the principal waving a handbell drifted through the classroom. Okay, John! We're done! We're done! It's a wonderful lunchtime! In a complete 1A from her unmotivated state, Mion gave the commands that signaled the end of the morning period. Keiichi-kun, let's have lunch! I might have been making a very troubled face. 
Freya smiled brightly at me. All right, let's eat. There seemed to be different cliques even within the class. Most of them were divided up by a gender and age, but our group was different. Our ages were different and we had both boys and girls, but we weren't reserved around each other. This level of openness makes a transfer, transfer student like me pretty happy. Brenda and Mion pushed their necks together so they were facing each other. At the same time, Satoko and Rika-chan were slowly looking their necks over them as well. Keiji-kun, hurry, hurry! Brenda waved her chopsticks around in an unrefined manner, trying to hurry me along. Unless everyone was together, they wouldn't even open their lunch boxes. Keiji-san's lunch boxes most assuredly fill with nothing but bread crust like some sort of this to do play the end. Why don't you just show it to us? Come now! Satoko, why are you so mean? Even though Satoko was hurling insults at me, she still wanted to open the lid to her lunchbox until I was there. I pulled out my lunchbox swiftly and dragged my chair over to join the circle. Hey, sorry to keep you waiting. Well then, Representative Me, please get the signal to start. At this, at first, this was kind of embarrassing, but I got used to it pretty fast. At this point, I probably wouldn't even open my lunchbox if someone else was too slow. Our ages and genders may have all been different, but we were all friends. Let's eat! The sound of our little five-part chorus echoed beautifully throughout the classroom. Really though, I've gotten pretty used to this group of me up of all girls. Of course, there were other boys in the class, but they were a lot younger, so they were scared to approach me. Well, that's to be expected. Younger boys, just the older boys is scary. Compare that to girls? Well, at least these girls aren't picky. We put all the side dishes in the middle where, where everyone was free to pick at them. I thought girls would mind sharing a meal with a guy, so I was a bit flustered joining in. However, Mio noticed that and teased me quite a bit. As the fruit of my efforts, Question mark. I can now reach over and take sides from anybody's lunch. My, my! Isn't Sir Keiichi's lunch extravagant today? My, my! Isn't Madame Satoko's lunch extravagant as well? The dude stuff has not a slip to it. It's rather trendy. Fine into the fight Satoko was starting, our chopsticks locked in across the counter, stabbing into each other's lunch. My, how delicious! Oh, this taro is good. The stew stuff is good too, even cold. After seeing my happy face, Rika-chan's expression broke into a little smile. I saved some from dinner last night. By the way, Satoko and Rika-chan's lunches are always the same. It seems that Rika-chan makes it for the both of them every day. Nice. Rika-chan made this too? These taste like mom's home cooking! I was honestly be impressed. The carrot recipes were from mold. They were not they were done by hand with a knife. That's not easy to do. I guess Rika Chan's just as good as at this sort of thing. She's really good at sewing, laundry, and stuff like that. Amazing, right? Amazing! Rika is quite exceptional in many ways. Oh <laughs> That's something for you to boast for you to boast about. Rina's actually better at cooking than I am. Huh. Uh, well, you know. It seems that at the topic of conversation switched to Rina when she wasn't expecting it, making her blush and trip over her words. Rina's lunch was this. really was the star of the table. Not only did it look good, it tasted good. Everyone else pulled, pulled from Rina's lunch box constantly. Everyone liked the sound like this one so much before, so I made a lot this time. It's good, I hope. I hope. It's got high marks for me. Ha, huh, Mion, you're taking too much. Knocking Mion's top six aside, I reached out trying to secure my own portion. Santa and Rika-chan reached over at the same time and a struggle ensued. Everyone shoveled in mouthful after mouthful while praising it, and Rena's lunchbox was soon empty. Did Rena get to eat any of it? Any of her own lunch? It was kind of bad that no one thought to leave any for Rena. Aww. But Rena seemed rather satisfied as she looked on. How did you like it? 
Isn't Renaissance an extreme, extremely good cook too? Quite different from Keiji-san. Hey, hey! I said that's nothing for you to boast about. You're not much different from Keichan, Satoko. Can you tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower, cauliflower yet? Ooh. Satoko's face went pale. Hey, hey, even I can tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower, you know? Oops, that was... That was me on talking. Hey, hey! Even I can tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower, you know? And now it's Satoko's turn. Oh, of course I can! I really can! It's really hard for her to lie. Hey, Chikun, they both taste good when they're boiled on top with my mayo, right? You shouldn't be pecking on her. Michon, too! Rena her really tried to follow up, but Mi Mion laughed heartily as he drew close to Satoko. Well, well. Just for kind of a little home ex lesson. lesson. Now then, Satoko. What's this? Mion lifted up her chopsticks. Between them was a, green, a piece of green stuff that wrapped with bacon. Wrapped with bacon. But that's... But that's... A spirit... Mio made eye contact with me. Yeah, and when... In 0.3 seconds, I had Rika Michon's mouth covered. Pulling out a piece of bacon wrapped asparagus and giving her two choices, which is pretty terrible. Um, well, um, you think the yellow one is cauliflower. No, wait, the green one is cauliflower. Why are you so mean? So which? Hmm. Probably the yellow one is broccoli and the blue one is cauliflower, but the green one is, um, ooh. I said that Satoko was mean, but Mion's potentially even meaner. Do you really know which is which? How about you just give up? I expect no less from the class representative, the oldest. The way she drives people into a corner just shows how much experience she has. That's just, this is just a hunch, but being brought into the Sonozaki household must be quite the ordeal. I do know! I really do! Then answer the question! I know! I know! <laughs> she finally broke down and started crying. When she acts like this, she actually starts to seem her age. a state of euphoria as Satoko bawled her eyes out. Rena was in a state of bliss as she rubbed her cheek against Satoko's head and smothered her. Really? A very content face. One that wouldn't care if the world ended right then. It was that kind of smile. Rena! Rena! Mimi is picking on me! Cute! <laughs> it's okay. Reno and Echan will take care of all those bad people who tease my little sister. Ouch! Fish boop barrel! It was like a flash of lightning. What was that just now? I'm wondering the same thing. Both of Reno's fists shot out at supersonic speeds, striking Mion and me squarely in our faces. Ouch. Before we knew it, Mion and I were sprawled spread eagle on the floor, staring up at the ceiling with matching welts on our faces. Okay! Never mess with Rena! The message has been received! This is the first time you've gotten one, right? Today, she went easy on us. E easy You mean, there's something harder than this? That, Mia and I both slumped her heads back into the floor in unison. From now on, I'll be careful with her when I'm within striking distance of Rena. See, Satoko-chan? I took care of them. Mm, cute! I want to take you home! Rena, no kidnapping! Making sure Rena couldn't see it, Satoko struck her tongue out at us. Stuck her tongue out at us. Turn it off! Using Rena like a puppet! Rika-chan massaged our bruises without saying a word. Okay! I've 
been recording for a while, so I think I'm going to stop here. So, what does everyone think of Higurashi? What does everyone think of the uh, Higurashi visual novel so far? I know I'm enjoying it. Although, judging from um how, judging from the episodes of the anime that I've seen, it's only going to go downhill from here. And I mean, like, in a scary way. I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want more of my content. With that being said, thank you all for watching, and see ya in the next one!